photos of Simpson wearing the Bruno Magli shoes used by the murderer that Simpson claimed not to own emerged during the civil trial, in which Simpson was judged to be liable for the deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. Photos of Simpson wearing the Bruno Magli shoes. The rebuttal here is, why did it take two years, and why did the photographer refuse to allow anyone to examine his negatives? That's kind of weird. Is he alleging here that the photo is a fake <laughs> with, with, uh, Oh, and, and are there other photos too? Cause, cause, uh, if, how many photos of him wearing the Bruno Magli shoes are there? Now here's, uh, here's another point to there possibly being a second, uh, a second perpetrator. And this is also something that doesn't get talked about. The second set of footprints at the crime scene. Again, this might either OJ's innocent or, well, regardless of whether he's guilty or innocent, there may be more than one perpetrator. So this is from the Spokesman Review, Spokane, Washington, August 23rd, 1995. OJ trial focuses on footprints. Top experts says he detected a second set at the crime scene. Henry C. Lee, perhaps the most prominent criminalist in the world, testified Tuesday that he detected a second set of footprints outside Nicole Brown Simpson's condominium on Bundy Drive, where she and Ron Goldman were slashed and stabbed to death that could not have come from Bruno Magley shoes. In testimony that held the juror and spectators transfixed, Lee, a native of China who speaks in halting English, told the jury that the imprints were on the walkway on the envelope that contained Judith Brown's eyeglasses and on a piece of white paper near Goldman's body that appeared in a crime scene photograph but was not collected by police. Lee said the second set of prints had a parallel line pattern different from the grid-like pattern on the Bruno Magli prints identified by an FBI expert who testified earlier for the prosecution. The prosecution was unable to establish that Simpson owned such a pair of shoes. Asked by defense lawyer Barry Shack if the print could have come from Goldman's boot, Lee said, no, I studied the boot. The jurors listened with rapt attention, many leaning forward in their seats. Prosecutor Cherie Lewis shook her head and returned to her seat after looking at the photo exhibit. <laughs> I mean, how much of this is police incompetence versus police complicity in a frame-up? Also Tuesday, the jury heard from Chicago police detective Kenneth Barris, who testified that police found bloodstains and broken glass in Simpson's hotel suite June 13th, shortly after he checked out and returned to Los Angeles. Simpson has said he cut the middle finger of his left hand on a glass in his hotel room after being informed of the murders, not at the murder scene as prosecutors contend. You know what else is weird? Is it possible he got some small cut and then he cut himself with a bigger cut to cover up the smaller cut? with the glass in his hotel room. Again, innocent or guilty, whether he came to the scene after the fact and in, in some kind of an emotional plight, uh, possibly scraped against something. I mean, these are highly emotional situations, innocent or guilty. But on cross-examination by Christopher Darden, the detective conceded that he did not see blood on the shattered glass and could not determine when the blood got on the washcloth and the bedsheet. He also acknowledged that he saw no blood on the bathroom floor, the carpet, or the telephone. Darden also asked about two laundry bags missing from the room, suggesting Simpson might have used them to dispose of the bloody clothes. So wait a second. So Simpson just got on a flight all bloody, walked into the hotel all bloody, and then <laughs> disposed of them after the fact? What are, what are they alleging here? It's weird. Did you know what happened to those laundry bags? Darden asked. No, sir. Those bags remain outstanding even today. Isn't that correct? Darden continued. They remain unaccounted for, the detective said. At the beginning of the day, Judge Lance Ido said that he would decide next week on whether to allow introduction of tapes in which retired Detective Mark Furman reportedly makes racial slurs and that he hoped the defense would rest its case by the end of the month and that the jury can begin deliberations shortly after Labor Day. Okay, so there's a second set of footprints here. What does that mean? 
And why is nobody talking about that? I mean, that's kind of a weird detail. Just another oddity. Just another thing that doesn't add up in this case. 